Hello friends, so as promised, I am here with the important, very important topic of the fluorescein angiography because these images are always asked as asked recently in AIMS November 2019 too. So let us try to understand the concepts related to this angiography. Now, first of all, what is actually the purpose of this angiography? If you see, it is actually to study the normal physiology. Now, when we inject this dye, it is actually passing through the retinal circulation as well as the choroidal circulation as well as it is also passing through the macula. So, when I want to learn about the normal physiology of the retinal circulation as well as the choroidal circulation, I will do this angiography, okay. Then second thing, the evaluation of the integrity of the retinal and choroidal vessels. If I want to see if there is some abnormality or if the integrity maintained in the vessels present in the retina and present in the choroid, then also I will do this angiography. Number three, to check the integrity of the blood ocular barrier. So if this blood ocular barrier is actually hindered, it is broken, then you will get certain uh, abnormalities on the angiography. Like for example, if you see the outer blood retinal barrier, this is actually interrupted in cases of CSR. CSR means the central serous retinopathy, while if you see the inner one, the inner blood retinal barrier, this is actually interrupted in cases of neovascularization that is NVD and NVE. What was NVD? Neovascularization at the optic disc and what is NVE? Neovascularization elsewhere. Okay. Now coming to the next thing. So how this will help me? If I am talking about the FFA, how this is going to help me? This is helping me in making the clinical diagnosis, right? This is also helping me to find the extent of damage. Not only I am getting a diagnosis, I am also getting how much amount of severity is there. Number three, what should be the strategy for the treatment? What should be the treatment strategy? How should you start treating it? And also it is used for monitoring. What was the severity before and what is the severity afterwards? So when I want to see the treatment guidelines, how it has been treated, what is the prognostic value? We, I want to do the monitoring. In that case also, I will use this angiography. Okay. So, in total, what are the indications of this angiography? When should I do this angiography? I can do this angiography when I have the choroidal disorders, like wherever I have vessels, choroidal vessels, retinal vessels, macula. Then if there is any malformations of these vessels, malformations of the vessels or when there is abnormal vascularity like for example in the tumors or when we have the optic nerve disorders. So whenever I have retinal vascular disorders, I have choroidal disorders, I have macular disorders, I have tumors, I have some vascular malformations or I have some optic nerve diseases, I can go for this angiography. Now let me see what are the important retinal and the macular diseases that can be interpreted with the help of this angiography. Now if I am talking about the retinal diseases, no need to say I think that the most important is the diabetic retinopathy. So diabetic retinopathy on one side and rest of the diseases on the other side that much important is your diabetic retinopathy, right? So though I have other things also like I can have the occlusions in the retinal vasculature, I can have vasculitis, I can have malformations like which occurs in the Coates disease, I can have the vitreo retinopathy, but the most important remains this one only. The most important is your diabetic retinopathy. This will remain most important. Now coming to the macular diseases, in the macular diseases we can have the detachment and along with this collection of the fluid that is central serous retinopathy or I can have the collection of fluid in the form of edema. I can also also have hole or I can have degenerations, ARMD, I can have dystrophies like uh, Stegar disease, like Bess disease. So whenever we have retinal disorders, choroidal disorders, macular disorders, we can do angiography. All right. Now some of the malformations and tumors. Now see I have listed the malformations. It can be hemangiomas like uh, we have capillary hemangioma, cavernous hemangioma. I can have malformations, tortuosities, hematomas, hypertrophies. You may not remember I'm, uh, these 
okay i am not saying that learn this but see the general idea whenever i have malformations it can be in the form of hemangiomas it can be malformations tortuosities hypertrophies streaks or hematomas right okay now Similarly, we have choroidal lesions and then we have optic nerve disorders. Choroidal lesions may again you can have the uh, neovascularization, hemangiomas, tumors, inflammations, so anything related to the choroidal vessels. Similarly, in the optic nerve, in the optic nerve, I can have the atrophy of the optic disc, I can have edema, I can have neuropathy, drusens, I can have tumors, and I can also have the myelinated nerve fibers. Remember, this myelinated nerve fiber is recently asked in AIMS November 2019 as a cause for the enlarged blind spot too. Okay. Now before doing any procedure you should be well versed with the contraindications too. Okay. So where you should not do? You should not do it if there is any known allergy to the iodine containing compounds because we are using the dye which is iodine containing or you have any history of adverse reaction in the past should not do it. Now other other relative ones if I have uh, the history of asthma or hay fever renal failure because that is the root of the uh, excretion right of the dye or where the dye gets metabolized the hepatic failure or the pregnancy right so these are the relative contraindications now if you are doing it there can be lot of complications and the complications of any procedure should be known well to you before doing that procedure so that you are all prepared to deal with the emergency now these can be divided into three categories mild moderate and severe mild moderate and severe in the mild it can be just the staining right i can have just the staining or i can have the stain secretions or the uh, vision tinged with yellow like i can have the yellow vision right or i can have the yellow urine or the flushing so basically these are the color changes the discolorations it can be the staining of the skin staining of the sclera skin uh, staining of the mucous membrane staining of the secretions yellow vision or staining of the urine all these kind of things now as it comes to moderate now more of allergic reactions so here what uh, can we have we can have nausea vomiting vasovagal response can be there then we can have urticaria urticaria fainting episodes and sometimes also the periphlebitis now the most severe ones i am most interested in so uh, you should not do these angiographic procedures during the night time when you are not well equipped with the ot's with the anesthetists with the technicians with the staff so that you are not really prepared to deal with the emergency so always take these procedures during the day when any uh, emergency can be properly taken care of you should always be ready with the emergency tray the abc should be well secured right you should be ready with the emergency drugs any time along with the informed consent from the patient so the complications that can take place are the respiratory laryngeal edema, bronchospasm, circulatory shock, cardiac arrest, convulsions, skin necrosis. So I think needless to say that they are very very severe complications. Severe complications are not common, they are quite rare but whatever percent is their possibility that is important. Okay. Now we come to the actual procedure, how to do this angiography. So as I told you, take the uh, informed consent from the patient that is very important about the adverse reaction. Second important thing that you have to dilate the pupil. Now this is again a very important question. Uh, once this question was also asked which of the following procedures does not require the dilatation of the pupil. So angiography is one procedure where you require the dilatation of the pupil, right? made to sit patient should be comfortable and uh, first take the control photographs now what is the idea uh, behind taking these control photographs first of all the patient will feel comfortable he will become familiar to the atmosphere to the ambience to your procedure you can gain the confidence he will become more supportive and cooperative right plus you are also readily uh, um, readily agreeing with me that uh, you are also in touch with the patient now and you are also knowing that everything is fine and now you can take the final pictures so for that we are taking the control pictures now after doing this i have to really inject the dye now this step is very very important uh, how much amount of dye should be taken 5 ml what you should take 
usually I am using 10% solution and which vein is used this is again an important question mostly it is the anticubital vein. So mostly it is the anticubital vein that I am using 5 ml I am using and 10% solution I am using okay. Then what I am doing I am waiting for 10 to 12 seconds right and then I am taking the for I am taking the photos at an interval of 1 second for 10 seconds take 10 photographs 1 1 second then every 2 seconds for 30 seconds and then after minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes and 10 minutes. Now why I am taking in certain phases let me show you because when you are injecting the dye from this peripheral vein right from the anticubital vein it is first going in this venous circulation okay now from this venous circulation it is going into the arterial system which artery it is going into the internal carotid artery internal carotid artery right is a giving the ophthalmic artery from there it is going both in the retinal circulation as well as the choroidal circulation now choroidal filling is one second prior to the retinal filling so first it is going to the choroid then you have to wait and then it is going to the retina that is why you are taking the photographs in the phases or intervals now what is normal angiography in order to understand abnormal first you should have control first you should have normal right now see as I told you there are two types of circulation going on in the fundus right one is your choroidal circulation and another is the retinal circulation right. Now another important thing is that the chorio capillaries are fenestrated the chorio capillaries are fenestrated there are lobules which are present here. So this allows the dye to diffuse freely it is going freely okay but the outer blood retinal barrier which is present where it is present in RPE RPE means the retinal pigment epithelium. Now the outer blood retinal barrier which is in contact with the RPE does not let this dye to reach the retina. So though it is passing freely in the choroidal circulation this dye is not reaching to the retina due to the presence of the outer blood retinal barrier in the RPE layer okay. Now once it is going into the retina what is happening there also we have endothelial cells which are joined by the tight junctions. So this is forming the inner blood retinal barrier and this is preventing the dye from leaking from the vessel. So normally why you do not have leakage normally why the dye is not going from the choroidal circulation to the retinal circulation these are the answers okay. Now if you see the phases of the angiogram we have got certain phases like uh, we have got first the choroidal phase then we have arterial then we have arteriovenous and then we have venous. So in this way we have got different phases because first it is going to the choroid then it is going to the retina and then it is going to other places right. Now why we are getting patchy choroidal filling while choroidal filling is actually uh, patchy because of the number of lobules because it has the fenestrated lobules right. Now these lobules are filling independently from one another that is why we have a patchy or the blotched appearance why we are getting a patchy or a blotched appearance in the choroidal vessels because of these lobules right. Now after this a very important thing and uh, this fact was used recently in uh, the angiographic image of Ames November 2019 in the ischemic maculopathy right. Now they say that when you see a normal FFA the foveal avascular zone this there is a foveal avascular zone here and that is why this is appearing dark. Now why we have a dark area here there are two reasons first of all this foveal avascular zone avascularity is one reason secondly we have got large amount of pigments it can be xanthochrome or it can be melanin. So what is happening these pigments are actually masking the effect of the choroidal fluorescence that is why you are getting a hypofluorescent area or a dark area when you see the no figure in the normal angiography okay. Now this means what should be the part of normal angiogram. If you see a normal angiogram what are the things that you are going to see first of all you will see a patchy filling of choroid due to the presence of lobules then you will see the retinal blood vessels filling right and you will see a dark area of foveal avascular zone these are the three things. Now what they are saying you can also see certain white areas and certain black areas. White areas are the hyper dense areas and the black areas are the hypo dense areas. So 
normally you should not see them if these are present if these are present then this is abnormal so there should be no hyperfluorescent or hypofluorescent areas normally we should have patchy filling of the choroid we should see the retinal blood vessel filling and a dark foveal vascular zone no hyper or hypofluorescent areas should be seen in the normal angiography if you are seeing them that means it's not normal now see this here you are seeing the hypodense and hyperdense areas right can you see what do you mean by hypo and hyperdense so this is for showing this hypo means the black areas right black areas and hyper means like the white areas that you are getting so normally when you see the angiography you are getting a grayish white color because of the fluorescence coming from the choroid uh, because it is containing the fenestrated choriocapillaries but if there is something that is blocking this choroidal fluorescence then this can give you the hypo dense areas hypofluorescent areas or the black areas now see this how can you interpret either it can be normal or it can be abnormal or it can be an artifact right now i am interested in the abnormal ffa in the abnormal ffa i can have hyperfluorescent areas or i can have hypofluorescent areas hyper means i am getting the white areas and hypo means that i am getting the black areas so i can get white or the black areas right now why i am getting white areas means there is more dye spilling so what can occur in these conditions i can have leakage i can have pooling or i can have staining or i can have a defect due to which the uh, dye is going into the other layers normally white was not going due to the tight junctions in the rpe so this means if there is a window defect if there is a rpe defect so that will allow the leakage of the dye or there is leaking or there is some uh, uh, abnormality due to which there is staining of the areas or pooling of the blood pooling of the fluid while if there is certain things which are actually masking this fluorescence so if that area is blocked suppose it is blocked or due to some reason there is no filling of the, those areas so in the, both the conditions you will see the blackish areas okay so now important thing you have to note that both the hyper as well as hypofluorescent areas can occur in the same location this is not a fact that you can get only hyperfluorescent areas or the hypofluorescent areas like both can occur at the same time especially in the inflammatory disorders now why you are getting both hyper and hypo in inflammation see here i am getting hypo hypo due to the edema right it is masking the effect of the fluorescence due to the fluid while when later there is increased vascular permeability then i can get also hyper so at the same time i can get both hypo as well as hyper okay now first come to the hyperfluorescence hyperfluorescence means that you are getting more amount of fluorescence it can be due to leakage due to pooling or due to the staining while it can be due to a window defect i told you that whenever there is a problem in the rpe the tight junctions are not acting there will be increased transmission there and therefore in the window defects rpe defects also you can get the whitish areas the hyperfluorescent areas then secondly there is more leakage more leakage means there can be leakage due to increased vascular permeability so whenever there is inflammation due to inflammation there is increased vascular permeability so there will be increase in size as well as intensity of that area right for example there will be hyperfluorescent areas there will be hyperfluorescent areas or the white areas right whenever we will have the papal edema because of the more collection of the fluid pooling of the fluid right then i can have the abnormal choroidal vasculature or there is a breaking of the inner blood retinal barrier like for example cystoid macular edema so here there is a collection of fluid in the outer plexiform in the inner nuclear layer hand layers layer of the macula so again you will have pooling or you can have abnormal vasculature like neovascularization against leaking so that occurs in the proliferative diabetic retinopathy so in all these conditions i will have more of the white areas for example see this in the papal edema now what is occurring in the papal edema this was again asked in the aims november 2019 recently it was asked as a cause of enlarged as a cause of the enlarged blind spot 
Now, this was asked as a cause of the enlarged blind spot due to the optic disc edema. Similarly, now this is very, very typical. Do you remember the cystoid macular edema that we discussed in the class? You get a typical flower petal appearance. Can you see this? Typical flower petal appearance because the cyst-like spaces that are formed in the macula are taking a petaloid fashion when you see this in angiography, right? So, this is called a cystoid macular edema giving a flower petal appearance on the angiography, okay? Now, see this. This is neovascularization at the disc, optic disc. Now see, this is abnormal vascularization that is present at the optic disc. So this is NVD and because this is neovascularization, there will be more leaking. So this is hyperfluorescent area, white area. Now can you see the small areas along the branches? So this is your NVE. We are also seeing the neovascularization elsewhere along the branches of the major blood vessels. Now what is pooling? Pooling means the collection or the accumulation of the fluorescein in a space. Now why this is getting collected? Due to the breakdown of the outer blood retinal barrier, there can be pooling of the blood. For example, what happens in cases of the CSR, central serous retinopathy, what was happening? There is SRF collection. Here we actually have the SRF collection. Why this is taking place? Again due to the break of the outer blood retinal barrier, there is a detachment in the macular area due to which there is pooling of the SRF, right? See, this is a typical pattern that you are getting on the angiography in the patients of CSR and how it is looking like. Do you remember the mushroom pattern? The typical mushroom pattern that we get in the patients of CSR or it is also called as the umbrella pattern. It is also called as umbrella pattern or it is also called as the smoke stack pattern, also called as the smoke stack pattern. So this is the angiographic uh, pattern that you are getting more commonly, mushroom pattern, or you can get this also. Can you see this one? Now this is a large blot that you are getting, right? So this is actually your ink blot pattern. This is the ink blot pattern, which is also called as the enlarging dot sign. Now staining, why there is more of staining? when there is more of fluorescence. Why there is more of fluorescence? Due to prolonged dye retention. Now why this is occurring? This is occurring in the altered tissue. It can be occurring in the normal as well as the altered tissue. For example, if you have drusens, okay, or you have scarring, or you have other areas where you have the edema. So in all these cases, you will have more of pooling of the fluid. For example, see this. When you see the drusens, now do you remember drusens are very typical of the dry RMD, right? So these are actually the extracellular deposits that you are getting in cases of dry RMD between the RPE and the Brooks membrane of the choroid. So can you see a number of these hyperfluorescent areas that you are getting and how to differentiate it from microaneurysms, how to, uh, how to differentiate it from the other areas of leakage. See, their number is very high at the macula. So because this is ARMD, macular degeneration, plus they will be uniformly affecting the macula. So this is very typical of the drusens. Then coming to the hypofluorescence. Hypofluorescence means either there is a reduction or there is absence of the fluorescein. So it will either block the fluorescence or there will be a filling defect. Right? Now see, blocked fluorescence, if the lesions are anterior to the retina, it will completely block the fluorescence due to the choroid. For example, I can have the vitreous hemorrhage, okay? I can have hard exudates, I can have the increased density of the RPE or I can have the choroidal nevus. All these areas will completely block the fluorescence that is present. Uh, coming from the choroid and this will lead to completely black areas, right? Now see this, if I have a hypertrophy, if I have a hemorrhage, in both the cases can you see the blackish areas, totally blackish areas we are getting on the angiography, why? Because it has completely masked the choroidal fluorescence. Then I can have the filling defects. Now because of the defects uh, that you are getting in filling, what will happen? There will be low fluorescein content. Now, due to the low fluorescein content, like when I can have the filling defects in cases of vascular occlusions or we can have the arteriosclerosis, right, where CRAO, CRVO, the vascular occlusions are very common. I can have the embolus, I can have thrombosis or I can have even choroidemias. 
Here again, masking effect will be there and you will get a blackish areas. See this. For example, I told you vascular occlusions, it can be CRAO, it can be CRVO. So what is happening? Can you see here a large area? This has become totally black because of the vascular occlusion. There is a filling defect and therefore it has blocked the fluorescence uh, caused by the choriocapillaries. Now in cases of the CR view again, what is happening? Can you see here? You are getting the alternate areas because here you are having the new vascularization also. So due to the new vascularization, we have hyperfluorescent areas and due to the masking effect, we also have the hypofluorescent areas. Then coming to the retinal vessels. Now normal retinal vessels, if I talk about the normal vessels, they do not leak the fluorescein because I told you about the outer blood retinal barrier and the inner blood retinal barrier like zona occludens, but they can open up during the inflammatory process. So during the inflammation, there can be leaking of this, for example, in the neovascularization. So when there is neovascularization, there can be leaking and you can see a lot of white areas in the PDR stage. Then another important thing is the RPE layer. Normally RPE is very tight and they will seal all the spaces which are present in the pigment mononuclear layer. But if you see the proliferated, as I told you in the PDR, when you see in the proliferative diabetic retinopathy, can you see a lot of white areas because there is leaking from these vessels due to the inflammation. Similarly, if you see this, this is the microaneurysms. Now what is microaneurysms? Microaneurysms are just the dilated capillary walls. These are the dilated capillary walls and uh, this is the earliest change that you are getting in NPDR, right? Why this is occurring? Due to, due to the loss of parasites. Due to the loss of the parasites, there is a bulb like bulging that you are getting from the capillary walls and they will be seen as tiny white hyperfluorescent dots in your angiography. So I can say that this is a case of NPDR. So I hope now you got a general idea of angiography. No fear about angiography now. There is a simple concept uh, which dye to inject, where to inject. Now what are the phases, how you are going on. Normally how you get it and abnormal things, how can it happen. Either it can be hyper or it can be hypo. What are the conditions where we can get hyper and what are the conditions there we can get hypo. Plus also remember certain very important names that you are getting like flower petal appearance, the enlarging dot sign, the machine pattern and so like this. So thank you and all the best.